this is my first one-man show, having it put up in such a way that it feels legit, I'm honored. Artist illustrator Thomas Fluharty's work is legit. An enclosed case of some of the many magazine covers featuring his artistry is testament to that. But it's the story behind his work and how he got to where he is today that he plans to share during an artist talk at the gallery on August 14th. I will be uh, basically telling my story. It's, it's a fun story, but it's crazy and sad and, and exciting and bizarre. So. Flu Hardy's crazy life story includes high highs, literally, from a time of heavy drug use to low lows with the death of his father. And he says many blessings too, from family life after moving to Minnesota to continued development as an artist, all parts to a picture that Flu Hardy says began at the breakfast table. It starts with drawing every day as a kid. I'm eating cereal, cereal and I'm drawing the cereal box and I'm drawing the curtains. If you start knowing that you're doing this at a different level than the other little kids, you know. Fast forward to the mid-90s. Flew Hardy's work, his use of humor and edgy biting style, as described by an artist curator friend of his, started to gain recognition and a paycheck. My biggest commission was the Mad Magazine. That started my whole career in 1996. That was a complete amazing story in and of itself. I don't have time to go into it. So many stories behind so many of the series he chooses to focus his work on, which brings up the question of the piece of work featured in his pop culture caricature series, the one looming there over his right shoulder. I poured myself into just creating and getting back to the love of caricature and painting, which are my two passions. And then when I got to the end of the series, three years later, this was the very last one. And this actually felt the best out of all the paintings that I did. Plus it being Prince, uh, he's, he's an icon in Minnesota. So it's, it was just like, it was just a no brainer. Then to paint him in, in the violets, it was, it was a no brainer. You know? from violet to a gallery wall awash in blue. The 901 Indigo uh, Blue series started Prismacolor because one night I was leaving my studio and I found a, bo a, a blue pencil, a little tiny blue pencil in, in the box and I grabbed it out, did a line, I was like, that's really cool. I said, it looks like comics. It just started developing and wanting to push further and so it's the only way I draw now. Drawing each line but never erasing, an approach that fuels this intensely driven visual storyteller. The cool thing is it's created a discipline where you have to really think this through. You're not just drawing on a big page and, and however it works out. This is like, this has to fit in an 8x10, 8 8 half by 11 If a photo grabs me or a theme, I'm gone. I'm literally, I'll draw that thing for days. Like, I won't even eat. You draw somebody, there's a story going on. So there's a story with hands. There's a story with a button. There's a story with your ear. What is your ear like? Your ear is different than mine, but I want to tell that to you. I want to show that. I want to display. I want to say, hey, look at this. So my Maestro series is like, um, are we paying attention here? Like, this is crazy. Look at these guys going nuts. These, are, these things are happening around us. So if we can just maybe stop what we're doing and enjoy them and take note of them, I think that's what I'm probably doing in my drawings or hoping to do. A closer look combined with the love of dogs has unleashed perhaps his most lucrative line of work to date and holds a personal favorite. My favorite piece is was two of them, probably Fantastic Day. It's an epic celebration of all things doggery is basically the, sort of the subtitle, but I just love it. I spent all the time painting it and it's sort of like a uh, representation of where I am with all my skill sets and what I know. And I love dogs. So I just drew them and just said, I'm going to license these dogs. I'm going to put these dogs on everything. So for the last three years, just creating dogs and dogs and, and I don't tire of it. Another favorite creation, one few could get tired of looking at, is prominently displayed in the exhibit. The super large Stanley with the big finger, um, that just, that thing just works for me. What also works for this artist is the opportunity to be freely engaged with visitors to the Inez Greenberg Gallery. I've never had a room where I could walk in and have people interacting with my work and then ask me, hey, are you the artist? And then actually interact with them as well and hear fresh thoughts and comments. That's a beautiful thing and I'm grateful for it. Artistry's presentation of Thomas Fluharty's exhibit, As I Was Going Along, is on display in the Inez Greenberg Gallery through August 24th. An artist talk will be given on August 14th at 7 p.m. 
For more information, visit artistrymn.org.